And we're back here at ONS 2017 with AT&T. We're here with Andre Fuich and John Donovan talking about next generation wireless networking. And Andre and John, welcome to the program. Thanks, good it's to, be, great here. to be here. Thanks for being here. Before we get started, uh, John, just uh, we're doing a keynote uh, to open ONS 2017. How did that go? Uh, went great. It's, every year it gets slightly bigger. And as I said this morning, every year you go further away from concept and PowerPoint into prototype and now this is a year where it's all about production. So it's really interesting to see great ideas manifest. Now I want to talk uh, uh, primarily in this conversation about the design of next generation wireless networks, but before we do that, there was a big announcement uh, just only a few days ago from AT&T and their partnership and their work with FirstNet. Um, John, if you don't mind, I'll start with you on that. Tell us a little bit more about that announcement. Well, th it was a, a highly competed bid process that went on for the better part of a couple of years. And um, legislation was passed that we were going to build a first responders network. And so for us, it was a, a must win. You, when you think about our history of serving uh, first responders, the importance of that network, we felt it was a great fit for us to go and build a leading edge network for those first responders. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross talked about this, again, this uh, development um, as really spurring uh, job growth for, for the economy. What kind of numbers are we talking about? I think that we, we mentioned that there are a lot of dimensions to this. We mentioned last week that it would create an incremental 10,000 jobs for the construction of the physical part of the network. And it's going to go on literally for two and a half decades. And it will have a network evolution that includes 5G, which includes 6G, that isn't even really on the drawing board yet, but the contract did contemplate the evolution of networks to ensure that first responders not only get a network, that they have a modern network at all times and that they don't have a lag from what's commercially available. And this really is about the first responders being first in technology as well. Now on this next question, and related back to FirstNet and AT&T, and either one of you can answer this, which part of the 700 megahertz band will, uh, will AT&T gain? It'll be the 700 D block, what's known in the industry as band 14. And so um, we're going to have to make some changes to our network, some modifications to accommodate it. But the good news is some of the features that first responders require will be able to retrofit into the spectrum that we currently have and the network we're currently operating. So there's an opportunity for states and first responders to yield benefits while we're going in and modifying the network. Andre, of course, uh, in light of being here at open, the Open Networking Summit uh, 2017, um, I would say a challenge, but an opportunity for a carrier to tie wireless, wireline and wireless technologies really rests on the shoulders of network virtualization, NFE, SDN. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. In fact, uh, everything that we're doing uh, is really in terms of opening up our network, in terms of open source, is really independent of whether it's a wireline or a wireless network. And so when we talk about virtualization, we're talking about virtualizing functions that really serve both wireline and wireless. As you think about it, it's interesting because um, the software technology doesn't care whether you're delivering it over the air, over the fiber, or over copper. It's the, the medium doesn't matter. I want to ask about Domain 2.0, and again, either one of you, actually, Andre, if you don't mind, I'll start with you on this. How does that uh, play a role in what we would just refer to as tying the wireline and wireless technologies? Yeah, so the Domain 2 program, uh, which we also refer to as our Network 2.0, was really our entree, our entry into uh, software-defined networking. And it was really about moving from hardware uh, functionality to software functionality. And <clears throat> the Domain 2 program was really getting that started. And as we've talked about in the past here, we're about a third of the way there. We're about 36% actually, uh, as I speak, on this journey. And we have a goal of getting to 55% by the end of the year. And again, this is not just to uh, impacting our core network, but this is also pushing the Domain 2 program all the way out to the edge, even into our radio access network as well. Segwaying off Andre's statement, uh, the goal really for AT&T, and this is out there, is that 75% of the network will be virtualized uh, through your optics anyway, uh, through your lens, if I may say that, by 2020. Is that uh, still a viable goal, John? 
Yeah, I think it's a, it's a goal that we're marching towards. We don't have a, at this point, I don't think we have any impediments that would say that it, the goal isn't reachable. If you think about the functions that are in our network, 75% um, of them are really the ones that we would forecast to be here for a long time. So it's not 75% because that's how many we can do or how many we can afford. It's 75% because the other 25% from today's horizon don't look practical to go do because those will be services or functions that will be retired over time. And so, you know, we're, our hope, frankly, is that we can get to a higher number if, for some reason, functions are going to stay around longer than we anticipated or whether we can find the economics to do them more quickly. But 75% is formidable. This year, when you think about going from, you know, 36 to 55, there's really hard stuff in there. And um, so we're trying to be cautious but optimistic and aggressive. And I think that's the balance we run. But um, I'm not here to tell you that we're ever going to relax on the 75%. I think we have a good plan to get that done. Talk about plan, Andre, and strategy. Um, how much of your strategy uh, going forward involves open source, open standards, again, in, in light of being here at ONS? In fact, it's a fundamental pillar of our strategy. Um, you know, we early on were very uh, out there speaking about it's got to be open. We want to get disaggregated. In fact, everything you're seeing today, and things, the announcements we made this morning, is really all about those fundamental tenets. Um, we see it as the future. We see it not just uh, how we're going to lower costs, but how we're going to speed up and lower that, you know, that, that barrier of entry uh, to many, many new disruptors in this space. And really open source uh, is the vehicle to take us there. John, of course, you have a number of researchers and developers uh, focusing on analytics and automation. Um, what are some examples of maybe a, a use case or use cases that involve uh, automation and analytics? Uh, my favorite one is the whole problem of passwords. My password sheet is three pages long um, for all of the things that I do. And you know, the network really for 140 years, and we're about 141 years old, um, has been about what's on our network. And that's been our expertise. And you know, we, we recognize that 80% of all of the uh, malfeasance that occurs on a network is done with legitimate credentials. And so we have to evolve to who's on the network. And so if you think about what the network knows, today the most um, confidential information that AT&T has is on a, uh, a site. That site today, its login is nothing. And if you think about how could a network get so good that it would lower your password threshold to nothing? Well, the answer is the, my mobile phone will look at my last several days and say, what's the probability that's John's John? And it'll look at you know all of the things that are location and so on and come back and say, there's a 99% probability that that's John. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the app's just simply open. So if you think about those kinds of things, it's a game changer. And you know, the, um, Randall Stevenson, our CEO, launched that service himself because he said, you know, I'm tired of passwords. I think you guys are good enough. I think the network knows enough. I want you to lower the amount of intervention by a person, but I want you to raise the security of the network, and I want you to do them both at the same time. So we always joke that the, the and part of the AT&T and T uh, is Randall's view that I want this and that. So I want better security, but I want no passwords or login. And that's a good example for what the network knows and how it can make people's lives easier. Use case for analytics for automation? Yeah, so you know, AT&T, you know, we're all about video. In fact, the majority of the payload that we carry across our network is video. So you know, we're not only just good at delivering video, we're also good at analyzing video. And I'll give you a, a good example how we're doing video analytics uh, within the company. We're actually looking at um, how to analyze inspection videos that are delivered by our drones that go and inspect our cell towers. And this is a really uh, a phenomenal new area that shows the power of video analytics, where we can quickly and safely, without having a technician risk any safety, uh, scan a particular cell tower to look for things such as grounding um, 
uh, corrosion, waterproofing issues, and to analyze these issues uh, without even putting anybody in harm's way. And then to quickly figure out what sort of remediation uh, to follow through with. And this is all done with uh, video analytics and something that uh, we plan to get very good at. Of course, AT&T and, and really both of you are very integral in uh, leading the way in network virtualization and now the public safety network, by the way. So uh, it's a real pleasure to have both of you on and giving us your time, by the way, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Abe. Enjoyed right. being here. Thank you very much. Thanks, and for Abe. all of our coverage here at ONS 2017, you can visit us at tinow.org. So long.